much for taking a moment to recognize and honor our family here at Vanderbilt Athletics. We'll begin with a couple of recognitions. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, which plays an integral role to our day-to-day -day process at Vanderbilt Athletics. We have two members representing the Student Athlete Advisory Committee with us here tonight, and I ask that they stand and re uh, be recognized. Our president from women's tennis, Marcella Cruz, and our vice president from swimming, Taylor Ward, if they could stand and be recognized. Our first speaker here tonight is leading Vanderbilt into its 150th anniversary. Vanderbilt was founded back in 1873 on a primary charge of unity and the greatness of human potential. We are so thrilled and fortunate with Vanderbilt Athletics to have a visionary leader help us reflect in 2023 with Vandy United, the university's founding charge. And for those who are interested, he does happen to have his fifth book coming out in March 2023, his fifth published work. We are pleased to present the ninth chancellor of Vanderbilt University, Daniel Deermeyer. Good evening to all of you. It's a great pleasure to come together to celebrate the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame's newest class. Tonight, we honor 13 individuals who represented Vanderbilt with the highest distinction. They embody our proudest traditions. They help shape compelling memories, moments, games, and seasons that unite our community. As student athletes, coaches, and staff members, they set a shared standard of uncompromising excellence. At this auspicious moment in our history, as we, long, as we launch a year-long celebration of the 105th anniversary of our founding and approach the second anniversary of the historic and ongoing Van United campaign, this class also reminds us that our path is ever forward. Next week, we will break ground on the Men's and Women's Basketball Operations Center, a cornerstone of Van United's ongoing commitment to redefine what is possible for Vanderbilt Athletics. This bold step ensures current and future student athletes have the tools necessary to build on the hard work of those who have long dared to grow in Memorial Gymnasium. In 1985, in just the seventh season of Vanderbilt women's basketball, all SEC standard Jackie Cohen and her teammates redefined what was possible when they defeated Pet Summons, Tennessee for the first time. In 1993, two-time All-American and SEC Player of the Year, Billy McCaffrey helped the men's basketball team win its first SEC regular season championship in nearly 20 years. We honor former men's golf student athlete, Hunter Stewart, and women's golf student athlete, Jackie Condolino. These All-Americans helped lead our golf programs during an era of unprecedented success that continues to this day. They established a standard that today's student athletes strive to meet and lift still higher, supported by a Vandy United initiative to fund significant upgrades to the team's Vanderbilt Legends Club facilities. <laughs> this year's inductees also pioneered new frontiers of performance. Steve Chandler is an all-SEC baseball selection and Vanderbilt's Athlete of the Year in 1977 
And Leonard Coleman, as an all-American defensive back who in 1982 led the football team to its third bowl appearance. As a university, we are committed to helping student athletes discover their own paths through relentless exploration and personal challenge. Randy Johnson and Lucy Jones remain fixed on that mission through almost three decades of selfless service. As men's and women's soccer head coach Johnson launched programs that set countless student athletes on journeys of lifelong learning. And as a beloved senior director among many invaluable roles, Jones facilitated a radical collaboration that sets Vanderbilt apart and strengthened bonds between alumni and supporters and their university. And finally, we honor five legends from Vanderbilt football's earliest days. Lynn Bomer, Jess Neely, Henry Red Sanders, Bill Spears, and John Tiggert all helped forge and continue a tradition that inspired Vanderbilt to construct the South first stadium dedicated to football in 1922. Now in a new era of First Bank Stadium, we seek to innovate and lead in all that we do. At Vanderbilt, as our motto declares, we dare to grow. It is our challenge and opportunity for the future. And this year's inductees remind us that it has always been our proudest tradition. To the Hall of Fame class of 2022, thank you for setting that example and my most heartfelt congratulations. Thank you. Our next speaker here tonight is an inspirational leader in her own right for so many various reasons. And I think for the people in this room, it's anchored on the fact that she believes and she's committed to a vision that a university with this academic prowess in a city this competitive can not only exist, but thrive in the most challenging conference in all of college athletics. And if I may add, she is a Hall of Famer in her own right, inducted this past year, hometown is always special, into the Huntsville Madison Alabama Hall of Fame class of 2022. It's my pleasure to introduce our athletic director, Candace Lee. Thank you. Please sit down. Um, you know, we have the, the chair of the board of trust and the chancellor here, and it's starting to get awkward, you know? So, so thank, thank you. Thank you all very much. And I appreciate that Andrew talked about the Huntsville Hall of Fame. You love to hear about your hometown, but it certainly does not compare to tonight. No disrespect to Huntsville. I did not tell him to say that. So good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. You know, there will be some comments that you're going to hear that in some ways may feel redundant, but it is really important that we take the time to celebrate the reason why we're here. So if you'll just indulge us, I would really, really appreciate that. You know, as a former basketball player and, and now an athletic director, I love competition. It's what drives me. But I have to tell you that one of my favorite events of the year is the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's one of the few occasions where we have the chance to gather as a family with no pressure or agenda other than to celebrate one another. We're grateful to recognize well-deserved excellence, reconnect with old friends, make some new ones, and renew our pride in being Commodores. 
Tonight, we welcome back to campus seven Hall of Fame inductees, and we also welcome the family members of five legendary Commodores who will be inducted posthumously. As I have said many times since we announced the Vandy United campaign, I know the Chancellor talked about it, but you know we got to plug that every opportunity we can. Those of us who are serving in the athletics department today stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. We have the opportunity to dramatically improve our facilities and the services we offer our student athletes today because of the hard work that our predecessors put in to get us to this point. And the dramatic changes that we will make in the next few years will benefit our Commodore family for decades to come. We're all connected and we're all part of the same Vanderbilt story. The men and women that we honor tonight helped write some of the most thrilling chapters in that story. So I, I have to tell y'all, I mean, you know I get a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, I don't answer all the phone calls because you know they're not always nice. <laughs> but I love the phone calls I get to make when it comes to this event because I get the, the opportunity, it is a privilege for me to get to call the inductees and tell them and we're gonna bestow upon them our highest honor. It is a joy, and I remember each of those conversations. So we'll start with Steve Chandler, a multi-talented pioneering student athlete who helped build the foundation for one of the most successful and diverse programs in college baseball. He and I talked probably an hour, and I, I wanna say to you, Mr. Chandler, that I know your late wife is so happy and proud for you. And I so enjoyed the conversation, it was very touching. Leonard Coleman, a ball hawking defensive back who anchored some of the strongest defenses in Commodore history. Now y'all, he was hard to track down. <laughs> I mean, we had to call people to get a number, to try a different number, to try, and then when he answered the phone, he was like, oh, hey. <laughs> And he was so gracious, and he was so excited, and he just kept saying, I can't believe this is happening. Well, believe it, and I, I'm, I'm so happy for you. Jackie Concolino, one of the most decorated golfers in SEC history. So Jackie was my first call, and I was, I was a director of compliance when Jackie was a student athlete, and I was so excited to call her. And tonight, her dad just keeps asking me, like, did she get in trouble when she was there? Like, was she good? I'm like, no, I'm serious. She was good. And he said, Jackie, you need to talk to your dad. <laughs> to Jackie Cowan, one of the first elite scorers in the history of our women's basketball program. Jackie was here last year celebrating not knowing that she was just a year away of being inducted herself. And she, she was like speechless on the phone. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Randy Johnson, the very foundation of Vanderbilt soccer for both men and women. So I wanna give credit, I don't know if Darren Ambrose is here tonight, but Darren Ambrose worked very hard to put together a, a reunion to recognize alumni from both our women's program and our men's soccer program and we, we were able to um, announce a scholarship that alumni had generously donated to in Randy's name. And so that was just the beginning. We knew we were gonna do this. He did not know it, but it's so wonderful to see this come to fruition. Lucy Jones, the welcoming face of Vanderbilt Athletics for generations of student athletes and fans. I mean, the, I, I don't wanna date myself too much, but you know, every day, Every day that I was a student athlete, I mean, Lucy, I must have interacted with Lucy every day in some way. And um, I really did consider her the face of this program and what an honor to be able to honor her. I mean, I, she probably is the most popular person in this room. <laughs> so I'm so, I'm so glad that, that, that we can do this. And you know, I had a chance to talk to Hannah, her granddaughter, reminded me she was uh, her only granddaughter. And it was so sweet because she said, thank you so much for doing this for my grandmother. And it means so much. And for a grandchild to be able to celebrate their grandparent, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm up here sweating, sorry. <laughs> All right, Billy McCaffrey, Billy Mack. We can still hear the swishes from all those three-pointers that he sank at Memorial Gymnasium. Now, I mean, so many people said to me, you gonna get Billy Mack back here? I'm like, you know, I like a challenge. We gonna get him back here. And y'all, he is here. <laughs> he is here. 
and Hunter Stewart, in all the storied history of our golf program, he is just the second named All-America and the first to be SEC Player of the Year. And y'all, Hunter was real cool. The student athletes, it was the same when I called him. I'm like, hey, Hunter, it's Candace Lee. And I, he was like, oh, hey. I said, hey, listen, you're being inducted in the Hall of Fame. But he said, cool. I said, okay, it's on this day. And he said, great, great. Well, anchor down, Candace. Hold on, this dude is so cool. I know he was excited. He was even cool earlier at our private reception. So, Hunter. So can we give them all a round of applause? So congratulations. You know, I'm really excited about our, our legends induction because, you know, this is just our 11th class. And when you think about the storied history of Vanderbilt athletics, we have a lot of catching up to do because there are some remarkable people that need to be recognized. And so this Legends class, it gives us an opportunity, you know, as we look through, and there's so many deserving people. We had a group of men who were part of the College Football Hall of Fame, correct, who weren't in our Hall of Fame, and we thought, you know, we, we need to, we certainly need to rectify that. So I'm, I'm thankful that we were able to add this component. So I do want to recognize the friends and families of the five legends we honor tonight. This is an amazing group of men. Lynn Bomar, the Blonde Bear, a Walter Camp All-American and three-time conference champion. Jess Neely, the captain of the Vanderbilt team that tied Michigan in the first game at Vanderbilt Stadium. He's the athletic director who built McGugan, and he's also the namesake of the street we call home. Red Sanders, highly successful Commodore coach of the 1940s, the man who brought Bear Bryant to Vanderbilt as an, assistant, as an assistant. He was also national champion at UCLA. Bill Spears, an All-American quarterback for Dan McGugan. He's a longtime force on the Vanderbilt Board of Trust for four decades. He was a legendary Chattanooga attorney. And John Tigert, who was a Rhodes Scholar, president of the University of Florida, U.S. Secretary of Education, the man who essentially created the concept of the athletic scholarship. I want to thank him for that. <laughs> Such an impressive group. Let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> All of our inductees tonight represent the best of Vanderbilt athletics. By daring to grow, they prove that at Vanderbilt, you can achieve your dreams as a student or as an athlete as a member of society. That's what we stand for at Vanderbilt, and that's why there's no better place to call home. So before we move on, I do want to just thank a, a couple people. I, I do, I want to, I know I made a joke earlier, but I, I so appreciate Chancellor Deermeyer being here and, and Chairman Evans being here. You know, that it is, uh, when you have the, the highest, right, all the way up the rung, the very highest level of oversight at our institution, and on a night, where there are so many things going on, for them to prioritize being here, it is indicative of the partnership that we have and the support that we have, and a big part of why we are going to transform Vanderbilt Athletics. So I wanna thank you for being here. I wanna thank my colleague, um, I get to be a part of an amazing team with Vice Chancellor colleagues and Vice Chancellor Eric Kopstein, um, he oversees the Division of Administration, and they're the lead sponsor tonight. And last year, it was our provost, and I thought, I mean, you know, Brett Sweet, I think we're coming to you next. But I want to say thank you so much to Vice Chancellor Kopstein for being a lead sponsor. <laughs> you know, especially for the former student athletes in the room, you know, your, your, uh, you remember so many things about your experience. I know we remember the wins, the losses, the journey. You certainly remember your head coach. And there are a lot of people that come before and after, but I would like our current head coaches, if you are a Vanderbilt head coach, will you stand up? I just want to say um, what a pleasure it is for me to get to partner with you every day, each of you. 
I know what your job is. I know how hard it is, and I know how deeply you care. And you make an impression on so many people for the time that you are here. I am grateful, so I appreciate you spending the evening with us. So I also want to thank, now, you know, it's always dangerous when you start listing people because there are so many folks who made this night possible. But specifically to um, our team that worked on this Hall of Fame event, I want to thank Martin Salomon, Robin Candish, Aaron Fields, Kevin Ingram, Eamon Kerr, Andrew Marinus, Michael West, Daniel Loxley, Andrew Allegretta, Stephen Parks, and everyone else who made this night possible. It is, everything has been beautiful. And I appreciate all of the hard work. I know, I mean, they work down to the wire. You all have done a, a beautiful job and it is just the beginning. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much to all of our sponsors and to everyone for being here. Yeah, please give them a round of applause. All right, so some of you may remember that old slogan, it's good to be gold. Well, that's how I feel tonight, and I know you do too, so thank you. Let's get on with the evening. I have one last recognition that I'd like to get to very quickly before we begin our induction portion of the night. If we have any previously inducted members of the Vanderbilt Hall of Fame, could you now please stand and be recognized? If you're in attendance, a former inducted member of the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame. Now it's time to meet the newest members of the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame, and we do begin with our Vanderbilt Football Legends class. As mentioned, we have five newly inducted, inducted members of the Hall of Fame that were previously enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. Of those five, we do have three with family members in attendance. We will begin first with the two that we do not, and we start here tonight. So we begin with Henry Red Sanders. A versatile student athlete at Vanderbilt in the 1920s, Henry Red Sanders was a member of the basketball team, captain of the baseball squad, and quarterback under Dan McGugan on the Commodore football team. But it was as a football coach that Sanders made his biggest mark on college athletics. Although his two stints as Vanderbilt coach were interrupted by extended service in the U.S. Navy during World War II, Sanders enjoyed great success as Commodore coach. His teams compiled a record of 36-22-2, including an 8-2-1 record in 1948, when Vanderbilt climbed to a number 12 ranking in the Associated Press poll. Overcoming an 0-2-1 start, that team won its final eight games of the season by a combined score of 307-26. Sanders moved on to UCLA, where he led the Bruins to a national championship in 1954, and he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1996. Our next inductee, John Tigers. A Rhodes Scholar, public servant, and university president, John Tigard also helped put Vanderbilt football on the map. Competing at the turn of the last century, barely a decade after the university fielded his first football team, Tigard was among the first Commodore stars. A four-sport athlete who also competed in track, basketball, and baseball, Tigard led the Commodores to a 23-2 record during his three seasons on the football varsity. A true student athlete, Tigard went on to become the president of both Kentucky Wesleyan and the University of Florida, and he served as U.S. Commissioner of Education. He was a tireless advocate for college sports who helped develop the athletic grant and aid system. Every scholarship athlete at Vanderbilt and around the country owes him a debt of gratitude for that. Tigard was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1970. Again, our next three members of the Vanderbilt Football Legends class do have family members present, and we are so honored that they would take time to come join us. We begin with Lynn Bomar. As the student athlete who put foot to pigskin to kick off the very first game at Vanderbilt's new football stadium in 1922, Lynn Bomar was second to none on the gridiron. 
a fearsome defensive end and dominant offensive force as a blocker and pass catcher, Bomar was named one of Walter Camp's All-Americans in 1923 at a time when college football honors were dominated by players from the Northeast. Bomar was a key part of three consecutive conference champions under legendary coach Dan McGugan. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1956. Please join us in recognizing and thank you, thanking Lynn Bomar's grandson, Rob Bomar. If you could please stand and be recognized. Our next member, Jess Neely. Few names are as synonymous with Vanderbilt Athletics than that of Jess Neely, namesake of the street that runs past the McGugan Center, Hawkins Field, and Vanderbilt Stadium. Neely's contributions to Vanderbilt run as deep as any, both as a player and administrator. Captain of the 1922 team that went undefeated, opened Dudley Field, and captured the inaugural Southern Conference Championship, Neely had also been a member of Vanderbilt's Conference Champion Baseball Team in 1921. After earning a law degree at Vanderbilt, Neely went on to a distinguished coaching career, most notably at Clemson and for nearly 30 years at Rice. He then returned to his alma mater in 1967 and served as Vanderbilt Athletic Director until retiring in 1971, overseeing the construction of the McGugan Center. He was enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame that same year. Please join us in welcoming Neely's granddaughter, Anne Eldridge Malone, and her husband, Michael. And finally, from our Legends class, Bill Spears. Bounding Bill Spears was the star quarterback of Dan McGugan's golden era of the 1920s, leading the Commodores to a 22-5-2 record during his three seasons as signal caller. A talented runner and passer, Spears led one of the highest scoring offenses in the nation. He enjoyed his finest season in 1927, earning first-team All-Southern Conference and All-America honors, becoming the first Vanderbilt quarterback since Ray Morrison named All-American. A loyal Vanderbilt supporter his entire life, Spears started a law practice in Chattanooga and served the university as a member of the Board of Trust for nearly four decades, from 1954 until his death in 1992. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1962. Please welcome Bill Spears' daughter, Jean Kreitz, and her granddaughters, Susie Hallows and Katie Spurlock. Thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> now let's meet the class of 2022 in the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame, our very first inductee tonight. Steve Chandler broke barriers as a member of the Vanderbilt baseball team, becoming the first black player in the history of a program that now leads the way in advancing diversity in the college game. And Chandler was more than a trailblazer. He was one of Vanderbilt's most talented players of the 1970s, twice earning all SEC honors and hitting 357 as a junior in 1976. Chandler gained tremendous respect on campus and in Nashville for his excellence on and off the field. Elected team captain, selected as Vanderbilt's Athlete of the Year in 1977, and earning the Bob Stovall Award for Community Service and the Jim Robbins Award for Leadership. After his days on West End, Chandler went on to a distinguished career as a high school coach and educator, and as a scout for the New York Yankees. He's a member of the Kentucky High School Baseball Hall of Fame as well. Congratulations to Steve Chandler. technology okay wow it's a beautiful group out there I tell you well thank you so much uh, to Chancellor Dear Meyer AD Candace Lee dignitaries 
and guests. It's truly an honor to be inducted into the Vanderbilt University Baseball Hall of Fame, but the Sports Hall of Fame in particular. There's a lot of people I like to thank. I'll try to be short and quick, but at the same time, these people are truly appreciated. First of all, I'd like to thank the late Gertrude Chandler, my mom, and Alan Chandler for just doing so much for me during the years and guiding me, motivating me, providing for me. Uh, I know right now they're in heaven. They're sitting in the front row seat. Now she may have a little toddy. <laughs> she may have a little toddy, but she's enjoying this. So thank you. Okay, also, I'd like to thank my daughter, Talisa, who's here with my three grandkids. And it's an honor for you guys to, to be here and, and represent me and support me. My siblings, Terry Chandler, my brother, my late brother, Bronnell Esto, my sisters, Deborah Chandler Foster and Irma Williams. Thank you guys so much for supporting me over the years, being there for me, to motivate me, to inspire me. Thank you guys. Also, I'd like to thank all the players that I played with, all the coaches that I coached for. They all contributed and make me who I am today. Our special thanks to Ned Pillersdorf, who I met here at Vanderbilt University. Uh, Ned uh, been supporting me for the last 49 years. We met freshman year here at Vanderbilt. Found out his birthday was February the 2nd. My birthday was February the 2nd. Ned's really responsible for me being here tonight. I know Ned probably wrote a lot of letters, really pushed <laughs> for me to get this on, and I appreciate him tremendously. It's good to see a lot of my friends here. James Thiel Kill here, Dr. Smiley. I got a former, former player who won a state championship for me, with me, Eddie Brooks. He's now a high school coach. And uh, thanks, Eddie, for coming down and supporting me. My niece, nephews, thank y'all tremendously. Uh, I know this would not be possible had it not been for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He gave me the ability to do what I've done, and I thank him for it. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Vanderbilt uh, Selection Committee. It's a tremendous honor, and uh, I hope God continue to bless everyone here. Thank you all so much. One of the most accomplished defensive players in the history of Vanderbilt football, Leonard Coleman left his mark on many an SEC receiver in the early 1980s. A four-year starter, Coleman wasted no time making an impact, with a record setting three interceptions in a single game as a freshman in 1980. As a junior in 1982, Coleman's ball-hawking ways led the Commodores to the Hall of Fame Bowl. He picked off eight passes that season on the way to a school record 15 interceptions for his career. Coleman earned all SEC and All-American honors as a senior in 1983 and entered the NFL draft as the top-rated cornerback in the country. Drafted in the first round by the Indianapolis Colts, he played professionally in both the NFL and the USFL. Congratulations to Leonard Coleman. This is kind of tough. I have no idea what to say. But this is my team right here. It's two of my granddaughters. Love them to death. And uh, just thank you, AD. And thank you, Vanderbilt, for inviting me and, and doing what y'all are doing for me right now because this is special. I came in 1980, I think. I never expected this kind of stuff, but it's good. 
It's good. It's great. It's great. And that's all I'm probably going to say. Just thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> okay. I don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what they want to say, but come on. We These are very proud of our grandfather. <laughs> very proud. <laughs> come on. Is all you're going to say? Uh, this is number three. She, tell me she all quiet, but this is number three. Not one, two, but she three. <laughs> come on. Thank you. Thank you. One of the most accomplished players in the history of the Vanderbilt women's golf program, Jackie Concolino took the SEC by storm in 2006 and 2007. All SEC and second team All-American as a freshman in 06, the first freshman in program history to win either honor. She followed that remarkable season with a sophomore year to remember. Named All SEC and first team All-American in 07, the highest rated player in the conference and third in the nation by Golf Week. The first player in Vanderbilt history to win medalist honors at an NCAA regional in 2007. Concolino won three individual tournament titles during her career and set school records for both 18 and 54 hole scores. Making her LPGA debut in 2012, Coccolino became one of the tour's top players within five years, making the cut in 21 of 27 events in 2017 and recording three top 10 finishes. Congratulations to Jackie Coccolino. Oh my God, um, <laughs> I haven't gotten a trophy in many, many years. Um, it was some mini tour event like 12 years ago. So uh, this is very special. Um, absolutely love everything about Vanderbilt. Um, I've got so many notes here. Let me just open it up and just give like a quick shout out. So first of all, I'd like to congratulate all of the um, other 2022 inductees. So special. I mean, Vanderbilt University has been such a huge part of my life and just bleed black and gold with everything that I do and watching basketball games, football games, texting my friends that are over there at table nine, like, you know, we just need a first down and we can win this one <laughs> or, you know, whatever. So um, I just love Vanderbilt through and through. And it's been such an amazing ride from my first recruiting trip here back in 2004, 2003. So, um, Candace, thank you so much. Um, never forget that phone call, by the way. I was on the turnpike in Florida, which you don't want to get that phone call on that road. So, um, but I made it through. I was fine. Got there safe. And so, Candace, thank you. Um, Chancellor D. Meyer, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. And then I know there were some other people that were very influential in, uh, you know, all of us getting in involved and kind of setting up this whole event. So, Kevin Ingram, Martin Solomon, um, their support staff. Anyone else who made this night possible, the wait staff, the camera guy, you know, the MC, hey, what's your name? Andrew. Andrew, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, come on, give him a round of applause, yeah. So it's been absolutely an amazing night. I've been, like, on cloud nine. <laughs> um, I haven't been to this campus in years, Nashville a couple times, um, but don't remember many of those nights, so. Um, <laughs> but, so I do have family here. Mom and dad, Doreen and Rob right here, I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. Um, my brother for, you know, just teaching me some hard lessons when I was a kid, you know. We had many fights at video games, hockey, golf, the whole thing, so. Um, Grandma, Franny, I love you. <laughs> You're the best. Um, wouldn't be here without you and Peepa, and I know he's here with us right now. Um, I love him so much. And then um, Aunt Karen, Uncle Tom, thank you. And I know my grandmother's at home watching right now, Nanny, and her husband, my poppy, got me into golf. So um, 
super, super thrilled for this, and I know he's watching over me and everybody here and congratulates everybody. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so that's just like the beginning of this, by the way. So <laughs> if you guys start playing like the Oscar music, just like <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Because I'll cut out ASAP. Um, <laughs> um, and then uh, Mike Shelby, who watched John Kern and I and Luke List hit balls on the driving range for hours. He'd tell us to hit it at this target, and I would hit it over here. Johnny would hit the target. So <laughs> thank you, Doc. Love you. Um, and then, oh, my God. <laughs> Who else? Uh, Peggy Brady, 2008 honoree, by the way, for Vanderbilt Women's Golf is here. Yes, thank you, love her. Um, I played at Vanderbilt with Chris Brady and she was my teammate, beautiful redhead, can't miss her. She's like six foot for a mile <laughs> and just absolutely loved Chris. She was one of my best friends, still is to this day. So I just wanna thank all of you for all of your support um, and your love and just getting me through all the rough times. Um, and then just a couple of other things, like when I was being recruited, I had no idea where Vanderbilt was located. Um, I didn't know it was in the SEC. I didn't know it was in Tennessee. I had no idea. My family's like a hockey family, golf family. We had no idea what NCAA sports was. So when I was like, SEC, cool. Like, you know, that means nothing to me. But now I know how special it is. So um, I had no idea. But once I stepped foot on campus, and Martha, my first coach, is here. Um, Martha, please stand. I love you. I love you. Um, Martha recruited me from when I was like, I don't know, 15, 14 years old. And she and my dad had met at a tournament randomly through NCAA violations. We won't get into that, but, <laughs> and so anyway, Martha recruited me. We came on an unofficial visit and I fell in absolute love. The campus, the team, the staff, everyone at Vanderbilt was just so amazing. Felt like home and here I was, and you know, just however many years later, graduated in 09, so I'm not gonna count. But um, so anyway, that's that. And so it was love at first, first sight, and my teammates were amazing. So I have a couple teammates that are here, Megan Grehan and Marina Alex, former inductee. <laughs> love them, they are here tonight, and I had no idea Marina was gonna be here. So um, just wanna thank you, sweetheart, love you. And all right, so I was fortunate enough to be on the Ingram Scholarship, and if you've been walking around campus, you've probably seen the Ingram name at some point. So I was on the Ingram Scholarship, and David Ingram's become a good friend of, of Megan and I's. We have an annual match um, in South Florida, and just absolutely love the friendships and the relationships that I've formed through Vanderbilt. It's been such an amazing experience after I've graduated to create these relationships and continue to help them grow. Um, so it's been so much fun. So there's two more things. So Martha, I am so sorry for the hell I put you through. <laughs> um, <laughs> that first semester everyone knows at Vanderbilt is very, very tough. So. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I tried my hardest. And Martha pushed me to the limit that I didn't think I could be pushed anymore. And it was absolutely amazing. So I made it through my Vanderbilt first semester and started playing really good golf. And I just wanna thank Martha for all her hard work and Tracy, my assistant coach. And then Greg, my coach for the next two years, my final two years, junior and senior year. Thank you, Greg, for showing me what family and faith mean in, in, in life. Um, I didn't play great golf those last two years, but that's not what defines us. It's, it's family and it's faith and believing in God and having people who love you around you. And I really appreciate you instilling that in me and making me like reimagine that in my life. And I really appreciate that. I'm also really sad that Greg and I didn't realize our love for The Office and Will Ferrell movies when he was a coach for me. Um, probably a lot of quotes and stuff you couldn't get into in college, so. Um, but anyway, stay classy, Nashville. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I got a trophy. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
There have been a lot of great scorers in the distinguished history of Vanderbilt women's basketball, but few have been more prolific than Jackie Cowan. A freshman All-American in 1983, Cowan was named Vanderbilt's Female Athlete of the Year in 86, leading the Commodores to a 22-9 record that season, earning SEC All-Tournament honors and helping the team earn its first-ever invitation to the NCAA Tournament. She was also part of the first Vanderbilt women's team to defeat Tennessee during the 84-85 season. Cowan still ranks fourth on Vanderbilt's all-time scoring list with 1,875 points and seventh in steals with 235. The Nashville native Cowan averaged 20 points per game as a senior in the final season before the three-point line became standard in college basketball. Please welcome Jackie Cowan. Now, Jackie, you're going to be a tough act to follow. <laughs> this is an exciting moment. When Candace called me, like she said, I was silent for a moment because I almost fell out of the chair. I was at a client's house, and nobody was there but me, and I was working on some things. And when she called, I didn't answer the phone initially, and she left a voicemail. And when I talked back with her, it was just, it was unbelievable. I was excited. Um, she told me I couldn't tell anybody. And I was like, really? <laughs> At least not until she told everybody, Leonard, that's part of your pro uh, fault because it took her so long to find you. But anyway, <laughs> we're not going to point fingers. <laughs> but this is a very exciting time for me. Um, my husband's been talking about me, and I said I wasn't going to talk about him, but he said, you're excited, aren't you? I was like, yeah, and I've been excited for a long time, since November. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm going to stick to my script and say what I'm supposed to say and sit down. Okay, so first I want to thank the Chancellor, Chancellor Deermeyer, and Candace, our athletics director, who are both doing an awesome job, thank you. I am honored and humbled to stand before you today as an inductee into the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame. To be recognized amongst such esteemed company is a dream come true, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to express my thanks. First and foremost, I want to thank God, my creator, for giving me all of my gifts and talents. Next, I want to thank my family, most of who are right here, and I really appreciate my mom, my dad, who is looking from up above, who's no longer with us, uh, my siblings, Andrew, Vincent, who's watching virtually, Angela, and Kevin, who have all been my rock, and my source of unwavering love and support. It really all started with them because I'm the youngest of five and they used to not let me play outside. <laughs> and I was like, why can't I play? I would have to sit on the sidelines and wait until somebody was tired or they got hurt and then I could go in and I still didn't have a much of a chance. But it's because of them that I was a tough cookie out there when I did get out there. They've all been with me through thick and thin, through highs and lows, through ups and downs, and I appreciate it. Their encouragement has been invaluable in helping me to reach this point. I also want to extend my gratitude to all of my coaches. One of my favorite coaches is sitting right over there, and she's also a member of the Hall of Fame, um, Co Coach Teresa. And when I tell you, I didn't know about hard work and ethics until I ran into her. And I, and I have to say this because this was really a turning point for me. We were in practice one day, and I don't even know if she remembers this. And that day, I just was not feeling it. I wasn't giving it my arm. I was, I was sluggish. She told me, she said, you just step right here and just wait a few minutes. And so I waited as the rest of the team finished doing their sprints. 
And she told me, she said, come on now, it's just going to be me and you. And when I tell you she wore me out, she wore me out. And I never had any problems again. She never had any problems with me after that moment. Thank you for that. Um, also, I'd like to thank all of my coaches from my youngest uh, days of playing to Coach Lee, who was my college coach here at Vanderbilt, my teachers, my mentors, my teammates on every level. They've all challenged and pushed me to be the absolute best that I can be. They have been instrumental in my development and my success, and I'm forever grateful for their guidance and friendship as well. And of course, I could not have accomplished any of this without the support of the fans and the Vandy community. Your enthusiasm and passion have fueled me, and I'm proud to be a part of this family. I just want to talk about three quick things that I remember being here as a student athlete <clears throat> and my college experience as a lady Commodore. The first one is winning the NWIT and being the first Vandy team to win a national championship. <clears throat> That was such an exciting time for us. Um, just the, the teams that we had or the teammates that we had, the, the camaraderie we had, and just going out each and every day to practice to make each other uh, better. That team I'll never forget. That was the 1983-84 team. My second memory was beating the Tennessee Lady Vols and Pat Summit for the first time ever. <laughs> We had come so close so many times. I, I'm fortunate to be able to look back because I kept a scrapbook of all four of my college years. And I, I looked at some of the scores, and we would, we, we would lose by two points or lose by seven points. And finally, when we made it, we just felt like we had really accomplished something. So that was a very exciting time. It, it was so bad for them that um, Pat Summit went back home and they practiced when they got back at 2 in the morning. I'll, I'll never forget that. That happened on Wednesday, January 16, 1985. <laughs> and my uh, last memory that I'll share with you was being a part of the first women's basketball team that made it to the big dance. In 1986, we were the first Vanderbilt team to make it to the NCAA tournament. And that was a big deal. <clears throat> so I'm excited, happy, and humbled to say the least that I was a part of Vanderbilt history in many ways. And I stood on the back of others like Teresa Lawrence Phillips, Kathy Bender, and they were there to provide a foundation for me, and I'm very appreciative of that because I feel like our team was able to continue to build and have a, a stronger foundation for the teams that came after us. So finally, I would like to thank the Athletics <clears throat> Hall of Fame Committee for this incredible honor. To be recognized for my achievements in basketball is truly a pinnacle of my career, and I'm deeply humbled. The one thing that I live by now, and I learned along the way in my years of coaching and teaching, is good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is your better and your better is best. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. I'm forever grateful and humbled to be a part of this group. To say that Randy Johnson is synonymous with Vanderbilt soccer is an understatement. Over the course of 29 seasons from 1973 to 2001, Johnson built two soccer programs from the ground up, lifting the men's club team to varsity status in the late 1970s before becoming the first coach of the women's program in 1985 and coaching both teams at the same time. As coach of the men's team, Johnson led the Commodores to 12 seasons with double-digit victories, including a 13-5-1 campaign in 1996. In Coach Johnson's honor, the Vanderbilt Women's Soccer Program has established the Randy Johnson Men's Soccer Alumni Scholarship. 
celebrating the history of the former men's program while benefiting student athletes on the women's team today. Please welcome Randy Johnson. This is, this is really not fair. Um, the four people that went in front of me are really, really good. <laughs> so I'm going to pull my notes out, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to match that at all. So you can sit back and know it's not going to get matched. <laughs> but I do have a bit of information for Chancellor Deermeyer that I didn't realize when I wrote this down. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, anyway, Candace called me and I, I had no, I'd just gone through in the fall with this scholarship that was awarded and I had no idea that this was coming too. So I was double blown away this year. So I said, I, I tried to figure out, well, what does somebody say at a Hall of Fame ceremony? So I looked it up. Probably should have copied some of these other ones, but I looked it up. <laughs> So there's four things that, that, that you're supposed to do. First of all, you're supposed to say something interesting. You don't want to get boring to begin with. Secondly, I want to say something about myself, but I don't want to say too much. And I, I sat there and this is, this is my fourth edition of this. I threw the other ones away because they were too long. But I'm 73, so there's a lot to say about what I've done and I didn't want to say all of it, so I had to discard most of it. Third, I got to say something about Vanderbilt. This is the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame. And fourth, as everybody else has done, I got to recognize people that uh, have helped me along the way. So I looked up, well, first of all, I have a this day in history that I get each day. Believe it or not, last Sunday, this day in history, in 1936, January 29th, was the first inductees in the Baseball Hall of Fame. So I'm sitting there Sunday going, well, I'm doing this thing Friday night. I need to find some more about Hall of Fames. So I looked up Hall of Fame, and believe it or not, in Munich, Germany, in the 1800s, <laughs> there is a building called the Hall of Fame. Now, I don't know what it's for, but what I read says that's where the Hall of Fame got started. And everybody took that name and used it. Of course, it wasn't written Hall of Fame. It was in German, but I'm not going to repeat the German. Um, so I looked up the, how many Hall of Fames there are. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Hall of Fames. So I looked up Sports Hall of Fames because I wanted to narrow it down a little bit. Um, so I looked at Hall of Fames A to Z. Well, there's no Zs. It's A to W. But I'll share with you the two. The lead one is the Aboriginal and Islander Sports Hall of Fame. Interesting, interesting. And the W is the World Curling Federation Hall of Fame. And if you know what curling is, that is one of the most exciting Olympic sports there is. <laughs> But I couldn't find the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame in that whole list. <laughs> Need to take care of that. So, so that's my interesting story. Um, number two about me. I always heard that what you need to do is pursue something in life that you love. And I have been very, very blessed with a love for soccer so that I went crazy doing it. But um, it, was, it was a real blessing to be able to do all of that. Um, I coached soccer for 42 years. That included college, that's 29 years here, but 20, 42 years, uh, college, high school, club, camps, men and women, boys and girls, 42 years worth. I did 22 years of teaching geometry. How many people like geometry? Good, good, all right. So I did 22 years of that. 
If you add those two up, that's 64. I'm 73 years old. 73 minus 64 is nine. So that means I started coaching or teaching when I was nine years old. <laughs> nope. I was involved in multiple sports. I was, as my wife will attest, I was crazy. So I was doing multiple things. Um, number three, you got to say something about Vanderbilt. So um, I started the men's program in 1978. Actually, I started club in 73. Started in 1978. Um, we got our first scholarship in 1981, and we ended up with only two scholarships the duration of time that I was here. If anybody knows anything about sports, most soccer has 10 scholarships. So we had, we had two. I'd, easy with that to begin with. Um, the women's team I started in 1985. Uh, um, along the way, I started a men's boys high school program in Gainesville, Florida, and Father Ryan High School here in girls in uh, Nashville. So I had two of those that I ended up starting. The women's team started in 85. I coached them for four years before we had to, had to split it. It was too much. First scholarship was in 1988, my last year there. It was a partial scholarship. The women, of course, now are fully funded and doing a dynamic job for the athletic department here. You couldn't, couldn't ask for any more than what they've got going with that. So with minimal scholarship, what could I do to try and build two programs? So what I did is I went after Vanderbilt's strengths, academics. I recruited the heck out of academics. Um, on campus, I got people on campus, any chance I could, because it impressed people. And I had them meet people on campus, because Vanderbilt attracts a great group of coaches and administrators and everything else. So we were able to accomplish a lot of what we did just because of those things. Um, finally, I'd like to recognize uh, some people, as other people have done here. First of all, I'd like to recognize Candace. Um, I have had multiple athletic directors um, here at Vanderbilt and multiple athletic directors in high schools that I've coached in. Um, I'll mention one that's a kingpin is Roy Kramer, who just did an excellent, excellent job here. She is one of the best. She is absolutely one of the best. I'd like to thank Salom uh, Martin Salomon. Is that right? Salomon? I wanted to make it Italian. Salomone. <laughs> understand it's Salomon. Um, and, and the staff that, that all did such a great job with this. Uh, really, really super, super job putting all this on. Um, I'd like to thank coaches that I learned from, that I played for, for and that I learned from them. Coaches that I worked with, you learn a little bit from your compadres in the coaching fraternity. And coaches that helped me, assistants that I had that made, made my job a little bit easier. Um, I'd like to thank all the players that enriched my experience. There's just so many of them. I had a blast this fall with the reunion. And I've got five sitting right over here that I had no idea were going to be here. Raise your hands. Um, that's, that's un unbelievable to me that, that they, would, they would come back for that. Um, I'd like to thank my children. I have three children here. I have Katie and Molly and Ran, who all played soccer and all supported me and everything that I did. And finally, I'd like to thank my wife, who has been my partner and helped me in everything that I've done. This September, we will celebrate 40 years of marriage. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Few administrators in Vanderbilt Athletics history have touched as many lives as Lucy Jones. In nearly three decades at McGugan, Lucy was one of the most prominent women in the department, serving Commodore Athletics in numerous capacities, including as ticket manager and director of the National Commodore Club. But Lucy always went above and beyond her official job description, serving as a mentor to generations of staff members and student athletes alike, and acting as a welcoming and familiar face to thousands of Vanderbilt alumni and fans. For so many people, even as other aspects of the program changed during her tenure from 1983 to 2011, the one constant was Lucy Jones. She was Vanderbilt Athletics. And well into her retirement, you can still see Lucy and her husband Doug front and center, cheering on the basketball teams from their seats right behind the baseline. Please welcome Lucy Jones. Get down here with the midgets go. Um, this has just been a tremendous honor for me. I love Vanderbilt, everything about it from the bottom of my heart. I didn't know this, but when Doug and I got married, he was already a Vanderbilt fan, and I was going to be one whether I wanted to or not. So <laughs> we spent a lot of nights up on that hill trying to pick up the games on the radio. So in our first date, we went to three ball games, and I and if, all day long, 12 hours. I went from 12 to 12. <laughs> And we saw three football games. So I knew this was the guy I was going to marry because I love sports. I always loved sports. I didn't get to play at the level that Candace did, but I watched her play. She was pretty doggone good, too. I can tell you that. You got out of her way when she was going down the lane. But this, this is just the cherry on top of the cake, Candace. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate this. And I want to thank the Vanderbilt student bodies that I had the privilege of working with. I, I love talking to the students. And Coach Kramer called me one morning about 7 o'clock. He said, you got to get over here. I said, for what? It's Monday. He said, they're already lined up for tickets. I said, but that's not till Wednesday. He said, I know that, but they're lined up waiting for tickets. you got to get over here, and we're going to give them out now. And I thought, oh, goodness. We went over there, and I told I said, can you talk to them? And I went there, and I said, hey, guys, y'all come back Wednesday. i got people coming in that will help me do this. And one of them told me, he says, oh, no, Miss Jones. He said, I can't wait to tell my grandchildren that I camped out for three days to get a ticket to the Vanderbilt, Kentucky game. I said, well, I don't want to ruin all your grandchildren's memories. I said, I, you just... Stay out here if you want to stay out here in the cold. And I ran and told Coach Kramer, I said, they're not going to leave. He said, well, just go over and send them some hot chocolate. I'm afraid that. Then we ended up letting them in the gym. It's kind of like, you know, when you let them in on one door, they want to go in another door. But, but it was so cold, I didn't want them to stand out there and when I'm freeze to death. That's all I needed on my resume. <laughs> but my greatest joy was working with students. I've worked with young people my whole life and, and athletes, and, and Candace was one of them. I watched her play, and now she's the boss of everything. So I, it tells you I'm really old, too. I'm probably the oldest one here, Randy. I thought I was older, younger than you, but I, I'm older than you. So <laughs> They got Grandma out of the kitchen tonight. <laughs> um, but first of all, thank you. And this is a great honor for me. I love Vanderbilt from the top of my, my heart to my toes. It's, it's been a part of our life for a long, long time, and I was privileged to have my two boys go to school here, Dwayne, Dr. Dwayne Jones and Dr. Jody Jones, and their lovely wives, Kimberly and Liz, and my beautiful granddaughter. I only have one granddaughter, and she's just the prettiest one ever was, so, you know, you only need one if you get the best one on the first row. Right? <laughs> uh, but my boys have, have, and, and my grandchildren are, are the light of my life, and Austin's here, he's a pilot, so he can fly me to go watch Ashton play wherever he decides to go to college. So we, we, we got that end of it worked out. Ashton, all you got to do is go play in college. <laughs> and I know he will. He's, he's a tremendous athlete, and he's a great kid, in case any Coach Lee's over here. <laughs> you would have immediate audience if you signed this kid. 
And we have a lot of people in this area that know us, and so I'm hoping they would come see him play. <laughs> so Coach Lee's not here tonight. Y'all need to tell him. The guy I got a grandson that can play the game. You know, you, you don't, my husband has this great saying, and I never thought about it till I thought about doing this, and it is so true. If you see a turtle on a fence post, somebody put him there. <laughs> well, I'm the biggest turtle ever on a fence post, I can tell you that right now. And it took more than one person to put me on a fence post. The, and, and I want to recognize some of these people. Two of them have passed away it was the late Ken Hudgens. He was the first one that got me to come to work. It was going to be for two weeks. And, of course, he knew I was just nuts about Vanderbilt, and it was just like, you know, you're going to go work in the candy store tomorrow, little girl, and, yeah, I think you're going to like it. But the lady decided not to come back, so that was my two weeks ended up being 28 years. But it was incredible. Not only did I get to, to, to do a job that I love and a school that I love, I got to meet the players, you know, and, and their parents, and it was just like, we are a family. If you're in the Vanderbilt family, you're in the family for life. You don't ever, ever leave it. But the first one was Ken Hudgens. Like I said, he was a neighbor and a friend, and he asked me if I'd come work for two weeks because this lady got hurt. And I worked 28 years, so be careful who it you agree to do. <laughs> and then Dot Pogue, the late Dot Pogue. Dot Pogue was the kindest, sweetest, calmest person I've ever known in my whole life. And, and she taught me so much. And, of course, I'm a kind of hyper person, and Dottie was just, like, chilled all the time. And I'd get, get to fretting about something. I said, oh, Dottie, I've lost this, I've lost that. I've lost. She said, we ain't lost it. We just don't know where it is. <laughs> I said, well, you got a point. I said, well, you need to get everybody in here looking for it because I've done lost this report and I've lost that. And back then, we had hard tickets. We didn't have this computerized stuff. We had a book of tickets for every seat in that stadium. So we had 15,000 tickets in that closet that I had to go pull tickets from. And it, it took a while. But it was a labor of love. And, and some of the times that people request to move their seats, this one guy sent it in. He said, I need to get a better seat because I was a policeman in Chicago. I think Okay, but what does that have to do with Vanderbilt? You were in Chicago. You weren't in the Vanderbilt Police Department. <laughs> but whatever you think you get a, a perk, you know, you throw that in there because they're going to do it maybe. <laughs> uh, and the other one that somebody else mentioned, and I think it was Randy, it was Roy Kramer. Roy Kramer was probably the smartest man I've ever worked for. He was a visionary. And I just, he was a father figure to me. I could go to him for anything. And I learned right away, if you did something wrong, go tell him because somebody else is going to tell him before you. <laughs> so I went in there one day and I said, Coach Kramer, I got something to tell you. He said, what have you done now? I said, well, nobody told me that the band was going to Georgia and I don't have 300 extra seats. I have 200 for my players. I don't have any place for them to sit. He said, oh, don't worry about it. They can sit over on the hill. So... But he, he always covered my back. I don't care what I'd done wrong, he covered my back. He might talk to me about it, but he would tell me about it later. But he always had my back. And Jim Foster, Jim Foster was actually the guy that hired me to be in Commodore Club. He was the interim AD after Coach Kramer left to go to the conference office. And he called me in his office and told me one day, I said, Jim, I don't know if I can do that. I mean, I, he said, well, you already know all the people, the people that buy tickets. He said, you've got half of the job one anyway. I said, well, I don't know if you think I can do it. I said, but I don't want to make you look bad. He said, oh, you can do it. And I did for 28 years, and I loved it. I love Vanderbilt fans. I love the Vanderbilt students. If, if you had a Vanderbilt tag on you, you were in my good block. You don't want to be out in my bad block. My husband can tell you that. But I'm here tonight, and my husband of 57 years, Randy, I got you beat. And as Coach Martin would, would say, we've been through three wars and four uprisings, but we're still together. <laughs> he has been the, the wind beneath my wings and my boys, my boys in my life, and, and they've married the most two beautiful girls you've ever seen in your life, Kimberly and Liz. 
and they gave us grandchildren. You know why they call them grand? Because they are grand. They're the greatest thing you'll ever have in your whole life. In fact, I would have had them first if I'd have known it. <laughs> and they're over here. They're, they're the real pretty group right there. <laughs> and the one behind them. And my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law is here, and they've never felt like in-laws. They've always felt like my brother and my sister, Billy and Darlinda, that, and they're always there for me. I mean, she'd tape games of Jody's when I was on the road with Vanderbilt team so I could see them when I got back. That's, that's what a great sister-in-law she is. And my brother-in-law, they're, they're just, they're my family. They, I don't call them as in-laws. They're my love-laws. They've always been there and supported me. And my nephew, Jordan, is probably my biggest fan out there tonight. <laughs> I don't know why, but he, he loves Vanderbilt. He loves Vanderbilt as much as I do, maybe more. He's a little bit over here. But he is a fan. Win, lose, or draw, he's a fan. And um, Christy Passmore was one of the ones that I went to work for when I first did the fundraising stuff. She was all into this fundraising. I said, now, Christy, I'm a country girl at heart. I, I know how I want to talk to people. I said, I may not be the most eloquent, I said, but it's from my heart. If you love Vanderbilt, I love you, so there's not another thing I need to know. If they love Vanderbilt, they're, they're in a good place in my heart. And this university not only gave me a job for 28 years, we got my two boys graduated from here, that I probably could have never afforded without the help I got when I worked here. And they're both doctors, they're both dentists, and that's why my teeth look really good. <laughs> and I told them when they died, they were gonna to have to prop my mouth open because all their net worth is in my mouth. <laughs> but they never complained. And, and it, except one day I went in to see Jody and his, his assistant came and she said, what do we have here? He says, it's called overhead. Thank you, Jody. I appreciate that. I just want to know what you thought you were all those years we sent you to Vanderbilt and DCA and all that. You weren't exactly free either. <laughs> and like I say, Coach Foster and, and the McGugan staff, you know, NIT, y'all know what it means, not in tournament. It also means you're going to work your butt off for two days because you've got two days to sell 15,000 tickets. And the, the staff at McGugan was so good. When they found out we did get an NCAA and we were going to NIT, they would all come down to the office. The football girls, everybody would come down there and say, what do you want me to do? That's the kind of family we had here. I didn't have to ask anybody for help. They knew we needed help. They'd come down and answer the phone. Even the guys would come and answer phones because they'd start ringing. And that's a good thing. We want them to ring because if we didn't get a good crowd, we wouldn't get another NIT bid. And we want to go somewhere. Those kids have worked hard. Candace knows they work hard all the time. You just don't realize how much time an athlete has to put into what they do and go to school at Vanderbilt and make the grades to stay in school, right? But they, they are special. I don't care what anybody says. Vanderbilt student athletes are special and will always be someone that I love and cherish in my heart because if they play for Vanderbilt, they had my heart. And let's see here, I don't want to forget anybody. The McGugan staff, I told you about it, but the student body. I love these students. They're smart. I want to try to get them to go inside. They said, I don't want to go inside. I want to tell my grandkid. I said, well, if you feel that way, come on. Sit out here in a cold. I don't care. Then I'd open the gym, let them in. Then they'd, you know, the next thing I know, Coach Cram would send them hot chocolate or a hamburger or whatever they needed because I didn't want them to starve to death on my watch. But I, I, this, I heard this statement on TV the other day, and, and it is so true, I think. If you love what you do, then you will never work a day in your life. And I was privileged to work for 28 years without working a day in my life because I loved every minute of it. And I want to thank Candace for giving me this opportunity to say thank you. A lot of you people in here are people I work with. Thank you. Lucy, ma'am.
one of the best shooters in the history of Vanderbilt men's basketball, Billy McCaffrey wasted no time lifting the Commodores to incredible heights after transferring from Duke's 1991 National Championship team. A two-time All-American at Vanderbilt and SEC Player of the Year in 1993, McCaffrey averaged 20 points per game over his two seasons in Nashville. As a junior in 93, McCaffrey made 51% of his three-point attempts, helping the Commodores to an SEC regular season championship and a spot in the NCAA Sweet 16. He did let up the following season, lifting the Commodores to the NIT championship game at Madison Square Garden. McCaffrey still holds the Vanderbilt single-game assist record with 14 and the career free throw percentage mark at 88%. Please welcome Billy McCaffrey. Thank you for all the kind words. Thank you for Mrs. Lee for everything you do for Vanderbilt and really the entire administration for all you do for Vanderbilt. Um, I'd like to offer my congratulations to the remainder of the class of 20,022 inductees. Uh, I'm greatly honored and humbled to be in such great company. You know, it was a uh, beautiful day and I recently completed the fourth grade. I was at Green Acres Park in Allentown, Pennsylvania, playing basketball with so many kids of all different ages, and I knew right then and there I wanted to be a college basketball player. And even though we put in countless hours of practice at that park, practice wasn't going to be enough. It was going to take a lot of people throughout the way to make that dream come true. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my parents. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God for blessing me and also blessing me with the best parents anyone could ever hope for. Mom, thank you for always loving me unconditionally, while at the same time teaching me toughness, resiliency, stick to to get the job done, for the confidence, and for being the first to instill within me the principle that the most important thing is that I always have to try my best. You're the most selfless person I know. Thank you. Dad, I want to thank you for loving me as well. Words cannot describe how much I appreciate all the instruction you gave me growing up. Thank you for teaching me how to tackle, hit a baseball, and most importantly, how to shoot a jump shot. I once read that the most precious thing that you can give someone is your time. I want to thank you for giving me more time than I ever needed in everything I was ever doing. Thank you also for showing me how to be calm under pressure. I could not have asked for more loving, caring, or selfless parents. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I would like to thank Sister Frances Marie Duncan for all her prayers over the decades. I'm sure I wouldn't be here where I, where I am today without them. Thank you to Dennis Olt, former basketball coach, head basketball coach of St. Thomas More Grade School. Dennis, you were one tough cookie. I thank you for making us very competitive, all us young boys very competitive at a very young age. It served me well in all my sporting endeavors. Thank you to Bob Slosher as well, former head basketball coach of Allentown Central Catholic High School and Elizabethtown College. Bob, I want to thank you for implementing a system that really taught me the art of how to use a screen properly out on the basketball court. That knowledge and skill paid big dividends during my Vandy days. To my teammates and coaches at Duke University, I am very grateful for you showing me how to raise the bar of expectations, for your competitive nature, your attention to detail, for showing me how to become part of something bigger than myself, and for making me believe even when I was hesitant. Thank you to Bobby Fizzicaro, Joe Crispin, and Timmy Legler for including me in their off-season workout programs every year. Um, you guys really pushed me to the limits. And thanks to you, I never felt anyone was more prepared going back to school, getting ready to start the new season. Joel Blunk, former strength and conditioning coach here at Vanderbilt, a great basketball coach once said, when it comes down to two equal teams, the deciding factors are mental toughness and conditioning. Well, I promise you, Joel checked both those boxes in a very big way for our team. Joel, you were great, far better than I knew at the time. Thank you. 
The early days can be difficult for a transfer student. I would like to thank the late, great Jim McPherson and his wife at the time, Colleen, for easing that transition for me by opening up their hearts and really welcoming me into the Vanderbilt family. You truly were special, and I truly am thankful. Along those same lines, much thanks goes to former Vanderbilt head coach Kevin Stallings and former Vanderbilt football strength and conditioning coach Todd Suttles. They both went out of their way to treat me as VU family as well. Even though my collegiate career was over, Kevin allowed me to occasionally practice with his team, which gave me a great opportunity to test out my skill and conditioning levels while I was attempting to continue an overseas playing career. I learned a great deal from him and his staff, and he also afforded me the opportunity to form a bond and friendship with all-time Fandy great Dan Lange and his family. Todd did me a big favor by teaching me some excellent footwork, which translated beautifully onto the basketball court. Not only did I get a lot of mileage out of it, so did the players I eventually went on to coach. So Todd, for being so gracious with your time and having a big heart, thank you. I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Coach Eddie Fogler. Coach Fogler was instrumental in making Vanderbilt feel like home to me after I made one of the biggest decisions of my life to transfer from Vanderbilt to finish my college career. I want to thank him for all the late night film sessions of grading tapes, his great scouting reports, the excellent game plans, and for conducting practice in a way that prepared us for the elite competition we would face on a weekly basis in the Southeastern Conference. Under the tutelage of Coach Fogler, I received many accolades, and even though the experts predicted that we would finish dead last in our league, we ended up winning the, winning the league championship. We then went on to play on the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament, and who can forget about the number one ranked Kentucky Wildcats who we defeated in Memorial Gymnasium. So, for all the fantastic memories that my teammates and I can cherish for the rest of our lives and the individual accolades that we will always feel proud of, I thank you. <laughs> Senior year with Coach Van Bredekoff was icing on the cake. We made it all the way to the finals of the National Invitational Tournament, capping off a career at Vanderbilt that I will always look back on with great fondness. Lastly, I would like to offer my unending gratitude to my Vanderbilt teammates. I would not be here without them. Thank you for your camaraderie, your complete commitment, your tireless work ethic, your skill level, and probably most importantly, your sincere belief going into the season that we could not only win, but against all odds, we could win in a big way. I have said it before and I mean it. I would not be standing here without those teammates. Many individual accolades are a result of great team success, and I assure you it is no different tonight. It is my great honor to accept this fantastic award uh, on behalf of all my teammates, many of whom will be lifelong friends. Vanderbilt holds a special place in my heart, and I'm honored to be part of this university's history. Thank you, and anchor down. In the long and distinguished history of the Vanderbilt men's golf program, one name that stands apart in helping set the foundation for the success we know today is Hunter Stewart. The Lexington, Kentucky native was the first Vanderbilt golfer to be named SEC Player of the Year in 2015 and just the second to earn All-American honors. The awards capped an incredible senior year for Stewart, who won the Carmel Cup, the Tavistock Collegiate Invitational, and the Mason Rudolph Championship, while finishing in the top five in three other events and Stewart finished tied for third in stroke play at the 2015 NCAA Championships. Before turning pro, Stewart went undefeated at the Palmer Cup and earned a spot on the 2015 U.S. Walker Cup squad. Please welcome Hunter Stewart. Well, thanks everybody. Um, <laughs> I think it's pretty cool uh, sitting there thinking um, just how diverse the group of inductees is tonight and 
just how that was a part of my Vanderbilt experience. Just really cool um, just to see everybody come together from all walks of life. Um, got a lot of people I want to thank. Uh, my family, my wife, Catherine, for supporting me. My, uh, my pro career wasn't quite as good as the one I had here, so um, <laughs> lots of, uh, lots of downtime, and um, you really are rock, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you to my parents, John and Melissa, my sister Annie. You guys made so many sacrifices. Couldn't be here without you. Um, such a special uh, thing to get to come here, and couldn't have done it without you. I want to thank Rod Williamson, um, bringing Coach Limbaugh to the West End here. Um, without that, um, <laughs> wouldn't be on this stage. I want to thank Coach Limbaugh for just pushing me every day to you know, be my best. Coach Smith, I'll never forget those walks we had on the golf course. They're so special. Um, more importantly, just thank you both for being such great husbands and, and fathers and setting an example for um, you know, me in my own life. Um, I remember coach came here after my freshman year. We, uh, we were pretty bad, um, to be honest. And he walked in and he said, welcome to the greatest program in the country, wearing gold pants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he says, he, he, he won't give me credit on the gold pants, but he was wearing gold pants. <laughs> and I kind of scoffed at the idea um, of that because at the time it just didn't seem true to me. Over the next several years, it really became true. Um, just so, so proud of the fact we laid the foundation for what's to come. I did some cool things here, but uh, to me, I'm most proud of the fact they got better when I left. Um, and I know that's kind of weird, but it's true. Uh, built a family and um, built, a, built a family here. And, you know, my teammates, the, the, you know, they're friends for life. So congrats to all the other inductees. Thanks for everything, Candace. Thanks, Martin. Great night. Thanks and congrats. Time, time to go get a beer with Lucy Jones. <laughs>